right, folks, Santee and Dirty Dan, Arizona Ghost Riders. What are we doing this week? Land in the Old West. How do they get it? Yeah. Wasn't real difficult. You could either buy it or you just kill somebody and take it. Land in the Old West. Let's check it out. Just so you know, this is a huge subject. Today's episode will be an overview with more in-depth info to follow in the future. Some of you have asked how the Old Westians got their land. Get off my lawn. I realize right now others are saying, we stole it from the Indians. Well, as true a statement as that is, remember, we weren't the first. In fact, the indigenous tribes were taking each other's land centuries before we even stepped foot here. It happens in every part of the globe, incidentally. It's not just us humans doing it. The animal kingdom does it too. Are you finished now? Yes. Obviously, Congress wanted families to move out to the wild frontier and settle it. The trouble is, it was cost prohibitive for a lot of folks making the trek. It was also too much land for many of them. Even though you could buy land in the West on credit and pay it off within four years, it was hard to mass enough profit in that time period. Moneylenders who charged exorbitant interest rates plagued the frontier and often put people in more of a bind. Yes, fraud and corruption found its way in. You sour mash? Yes, I am, sir. Looking to buy some land. Well, Pilgrim, how much do you want? How much you got? I got 40 acres up in the Sawgrass Mountains that I'm willing to get rid of. Does it have fissures? Well, there's a lot of people go up there and get them out of the ponds. No, no, does the land have fissures? The land don't have fish. You gotta go to the pond to get fish. Are there any cracks in the ground? Well, there's no cracks, but there's a heck of a lot of rocks. Okay, all right, I'm interested, I'm interested. Okay, what, what is about a dollar an acre? How much is it? Oh, no, it's a thousand dollars for the whole 40 acres. It's been, the price has been going up. Thousand dollars? Inflation, my friend. All right, well, I need it, so there, there you go, it's a thousand bucks. And here's your deed. Oh, boy, thank you. You're all set. All righty, thank See you, you later, very much. Partner. I'm a landowner. Hey, wait a minute, there are no sawgrass mountains in Arizona. On July 1st, 1820, the Land Act gave the government the ability to collect all that payment up front. And yeah, that also sounds tough. To get more people to jump on this, they lowered the price per acre down from $2 to $1.25, and the minimum acreage from $160 to $80. So, for about $100, you could get a big section of land west of the Mississippi and not break the bank. The Spanish government was also trying to entice American pioneers and open Texas to those who would respect the laws and constitution of the country. Moses Austin took an opportunity and was granted land on the Brazos River in exchange for bringing 300 Catholic families from Louisiana. He passed the torch to his son, Stephen, who later brought in hundreds more families to colonize Texas. The Homestead Act of 1862 opened up millions of acres on the frontier and essentially gave it away. There was an application process, and if you were accepted into it, you had to build a home and improve the land, or the government could take it back. Charles Ingalls from Little House in the Prairie fame was one of them. Good times, Good times. The acts that followed allowed former slaves to get land, and one gave you an additional 160 acres if you planted trees on one quarter of your property. Purchasing your land wasn't just through federal programs. Through the Morrill Act, states were given acres to sell. Brokers bought it at 50 cents an acre and resold it to pioneers for $5 to $10 an acre. So, if you didn't qualify for the other acts, you could pay through the nose for your homestead. Then you would only be able to afford ramen for the next few years. 
On April 22, 1889, 50,000 settlers lined up in Oklahoma for the first land run into unassigned land. Two million acres split into 160-acre sections were available for people to claim. On the cannon shot, every homesteading hopeful made a mad dash for a piece of the American West and hopefully a prosperous future. Now, homesteaders had a lot to contend with. Weather, crop failure, disease, not to mention it was all backbreaking work. Over a million of them threw in the towel. Some went back to their original homes, while others stayed in the West and moved to towns where there were more opportunities to make a living. The last Homestead Act ended in 1976. By then, the West was all settled, and the success was bearing fruit, until the toilet paper shortage of 2020. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you down the trail. Phew. Sourdough? Sure am. I'm sour mash. Cut. <laughs> All right.